I've described in another module the subtleties of removing the cover of the disk drive, so in this module we'll just point out that there are four screws and we'll slide the cover off, taking care not to tear the vent covers. With the cover off, the first thing you'll want to do in this module is to remove the analog card. First, carefully remove the read-write head plug from the front of the analog card and then remove the ribbon cable. And please don't do it by the cable itself. And then remove the board plug from the rear. Remove the two screws at the front. And then slide the board forward past the retraining slots at the rear and lift it out. Putting the new analog card in is just the reverse of taking one out. And slide it into the slots and line it up so that the screws go in the holes. Tack it down. the board plug in in the back, put the ribbon cable plug in, making sure that all ten pins go in the ten holes, and put in the read-write head plug. That's all there is to it. Now eject the tape without rewinding it and take it with you to your workstation. Uh, remove the cover of your disk drive and practice removing and replacing the analog card. Use the procedure in your workbook as a checklist. And if you have any questions about anything at all, feel free to ask your course manager. The diskette stop guide is located under the analog card, so let's remove the analog card. Some disk drives have adjustable stop guides and some don't. Here's one with an adjustable stop guide. It's this black plastic gadget right here. And there's the mounting screw and the adjusting screw at the same time. Here's one that can't be adjusted. And notice how the function of the stop guide is taken over by the casting itself. It should never be necessary to adjust the stop guide, but they do get tinkered with. And when they are out of adjustment, the diskette can be so far off center that the collet hub, this thing right here, can't find center it as it seats, and that can damage the diskette. If you do have to adjust one, the first thing you do is put in the adjustment tool and gently close the door. If the adjustment tool won't go all the way in, and this one won't, loosen the adjustment screw, which you can get at through the hole there, and seat the adjustment tool solidly, and then just move the stop with your finger until it just touches the tool. And then tighten it down. And that's all there is to that. Now you're ready to practice adjusting the stop guide. Stop the tape, eject it without rewinding, and take it to your station. Sometimes a diskette just will not boot when it absolutely should. If that happens to you and you're sure that everything is good, first try opening the door and just moving it a little bit. If it won't boot, try it again. Try that two or three times. If you do it two or three times and it still won't boot, then the collet hub may need to be centered. This is the collet shaft. If you look straight down on it, you can see whether it's centered in the hole. If it isn't, then the collet hub, this thing here, won't be able to seat properly in its receptacle. 
If the shaft is not in the center or if the hub has to seek center, loosen the two screws in the back and the two screws in the front. And then close the door, making sure that the collet hub is seated. And then move the whole bracket. You see how that goes? Move the whole bracket until that shaft is right in the center. And then tighten down the rear screws. And check it. Open the door and close it. It should stay right in the center. Now, as a further check, open the door and push it off center. And it should go right back to the middle when you, when you reseat it. Now, when that's properly adjusted, then all you have to do is slip the adjustment tool in the way you learned how to do in module DD1 and adjust the front door and tighten down the screws. Okay, now you're ready to practice the collet tub adjustment until you're sure you can do it correctly. As usual, stop the tape, eject it without rewinding, and take it back with you to your station. When you can do the collet tub adjustment well, come on back and watch the next segment. Occasionally, you may have to replace the collet hub. The process is simple. Remove the two screws on each side of the bezel. This thing here is the bezel. Two screws on that side. two screws on that side and then just pull the bezel right off. Be careful not to pull too hard on those wires on the side there. I'll lay it down. Now we have to take this retaining clip off. And getting these little things off is, is trickier than it looks. One way that works for me is to hold one side with my finger and then just push it off with the screwdriver. Put the little clip over here, out of the way, and then take the collet hub assembly right out. Now, there's a spring on here and a washer, and you need them both. But watch it. When you take the spring off, every once in a while, one will be captured by the plastic around the base. And if you pull on it too hard, it'll stretch the spring. So be careful when you take it off. We take off the spring, and we'll have to get that washer out of there. They don't just fall off when you turn them upside down. You actually have to rescue them. You see that? OK. Save it. When you put the new collet hub on, put the washer in, put the spring on, put it in the receptacle, Lower the frame around it. Put the little C-clamp or the little retaining ring on there. And push it in with a prayer. Make sure that it is seated. Now, replacing the bezel, you have to tilt the door back. And then make sure that these hinge pins go in the slots on the back of the bezel. And what I like to do is put it in, turn it up, and tack it down on each side. It's under tension here, and it's a little tricky sometimes. Uh, 
Okay, there it goes. Now, I'll tack down the other side. check the door and the door works so now we're home free oops wrong kind of screw Okay, now you're ready to practice replacing the collet hub. As usual, stop the tape, eject it without rewinding, and take it back to your station. When you're pretty good at collet hub replacement, come back and watch the next segment. As long as we're in the machine, let's see how to replace the head load button. You'll find out later about how to tell when it needs replacing, but for the moment it's enough to know that this is it right here. You need some small needle nose pliers. And all you do is lift the arm and squeeze the top. And that should fall right out like that. Now, before putting in the new one, look at it to make sure that it's, uh, uh, that it's even on the bottom, and then install it by inserting it in the hole and then just snapping it into place. That's all there is to that. Now, rewind the tape, put it back on the shelf, and then practice removing and replacing the head load pad. Please, don't hesitate to look at the tape again or to practice any of the procedures before you call your course manager.